Tick, tick, boom. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to What Up Clay, the channel I'm talking about all kinds of things like how to fix things, build things, maintain things, as well as park view. Today we're going to do uh, finish up the actual the proc review on the Orca. We're going to finish up the uh, review by running it on the Jerry. We're going to run through different uh, lows, different uh, tests and stuff like that, and see how it compares to the other modes while under load. So let's say we uh, get into this and go learn something. Okay, so I have the uh, the Orca right here on this side is the drive motor. The load motor is going to be the uh, surpass, the uh, the big boy. Let's go ahead and do a free wheel. I, there's a pinion on there, but it's not connected to that. So I just want to get a free wheel on it. See what runs. This is a pretty quiet motor. Okay. 4.82 uh, amps, KV is 31.75, then we go to the uh, 90 degrees, 0 0.1, 4.5, 4.6. Okay, let's go ahead and set up, put the, uh, we got the 27 tooth on there, let's go ahead and line it up and try it with a load. Oh, before we do that, let's do the uh, RPM. Twenty-three, eight fifty about. So twenty-three thousand eight hundred jumped up to eight fifty was the highest, but it set around uh, twenty-three thousand eight hundred. So anyhow, let's go ahead and lock this thing in place. All right. Got to plug in the power for the meter. I got that plugged in now. So let's go ahead and run the RPM for uh, 20 seconds. Get my timer set up here. And let's uh, go. Okay, and there you have that. Check the temperature on it. Temperature is 96 degrees. See that there? All right, whoop, disappeared. Whoop. I'm oh, sorry, I read that wrong. It's 98 degrees. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bump up the uh, to the uh, 28 tooth. Okay, 28 tooth. Auto run. 10.60 amps. 29.73 kV. Whoops. Now we don't need the temperature on that one, anyways. We're going to do the test here. So let's go ahead and run the uh, 22nd test for the RPMs. Here we go. All right, now we're going to the 29 tooth. 
All right, in case you're wondering, the temperature on the motor that last run with the 28 tooth, it was 102 degrees. So now we're going to run the 29 tooth. We're going to run the uh, auto run now. There we got the uh, 1086 amps, 2926 kV. See the actual run 106 on the motor temperature it says there. But let's see what it is after the we do the RPM test. All right, let's go ahead. Check the temperature. Still showing temperature at 106. Um, I change out the uh, temp gun from, I mean, they're both flukes, but this one holds the uh, temperature on there longer. I like that feature better. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the 30 tooth. All right, now we have the 30 tooth on. Going to do an auto run. There you have it, uh, 1125 amps. Let's go ahead and do the uh, RPM test. Set it up here. Okay, let's do it. Temp. We need 106 on the temp. Okay, bump it up to a 31 tooth now. Okay, now for the uh, 31 tooth auto runs. So if you're wondering, how long it takes me to swap this out and how long the motor has to cool down it's approximately one minute because that's how long it takes me to loosen the screws on this slide it back take the pinion off put the new pinion on put it back in place gap it just right and then uh, when I gap it I use the old uh, ziplock bag technique for gapping and uh, as you see it's pretty good not a lot of friction there so Anyhow, let's go ahead and do the uh, auto run on the 31 tooth. There you have it there. And we'll go ahead and run the RPM now. Okay, and go. Okay, so if you're wondering, for those that, if this is your first time watching the video, this right here 
uh, measures the RPM on the load motor. So it's testing to see how fast the drive motor can spin the load motor. And that's what we're comparing is how fast it's going to spin the load motor. The load motor acts as the uh, uh, tires if you were to spin the rear tires on a car. And for temperature we have We have 111. That jumped up there in temp. Okay, let's go ahead and do the uh, 32. We have two more to go, 32 and then the uh, 41. Okay, we have 32 tooth loaded. Let's go ahead and do the uh, auto run. Eleven eighty two amps. Let's go ahead and do the uh, RPM run now. And go. Okay, now we'll do the uh, 41 tooth. Last one. Okay, now we're on the uh, 41 tooth, the last one. Let's go ahead and do the uh, auto run. There you have it, uh, 1532 amps at 2747 kV. All right, let's do the uh, RPM run now for 20 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and take the numbers. We'll put them on the spreadsheet and then go over it, and then I'll give my final view, review on it. And yes, before I go over the numbers, you're going to hear my disclaimer, and that is, I know there's tens of thousands of racers out there, so there's going to be tens of thousands of different opinions on what these numbers mean. These numbers are, when I go over these numbers, how I explain it is strictly my personal opinion. Um, if you have another opinion, please put it down in the comments section. Share your knowledge with us. Like I always say, I'm not a motor engineer. I just test motors. I put numbers out there so everybody can see the numbers and make a judgment call for themselves. But, again, here's my personal view on it. So, getting to the numbers. The Orca Blitzream 3 um, starts off at 23,763. It starts to get a little hot on the upper end, but look at that, 28,132 RPMs um, with a load. Uh, these are the uh, the RPM gains and the amp draws, stuff like that. So, I mean, this appears to be a really torquey motor. Has a good, good uh, top end over here, but... When going down the straightaway, when it doesn't have as much of a load on it, because once it gets up to speed... There's not as much of a load on the motor. Um, it's almost free spinning. Uh, so how does it compare? I mean, getting up to speed is great. Let's see how it compares to the other ones. The speed zone, 24,000 RPM. So if you're going down the straights, the speed zone would be a little faster. Getting up to speed, though, looks like the Orca will be a little bit quicker getting up to speed the uh, temperatures are pretty right there they're pretty much the same amp draw though if you look at the speed zone it's a little bit higher 
uh, a little bit lower RPM. So, uh, yeah, so the Orca get a little get you up to speed faster, but at the top end when you're going down the straights, the speed zone will be will be faster. Uh, how's it compared to the R1 works? R1 works. Uh, it's almost right there when getting up the speed. And the amp draw 15.4 versus 15.3, 28,000. So it's you know it's just under 100, 100 RPMs less. But I don't know, man. Maybe I don't know if it's a. Some guys say they do have problem with their R1 works having a lot of heat. Some guys say they don't have heat. Um, I don't know. I just test the motor I have. I don't go through hand pick which one I want to pick. I just buy one and then use it. Um, red racing. Red racing on the top end straightaway is almost 25,000 RPMs, which is much faster. Uh, but getting up to the, getting up to that, it looks like the Orca would be, would get up to speed faster because it's, uh, 1532 versus, uh, 1544. And this is about 300 RPMs slower. Uh, let's see here how it compares to the rest of them. Uh, go ahead and freeze frame them, screenshot them. Now, if you guys want to see these numbers and you want to see the whole screenshot, check out um, WMHRacing.com. You will find my spreadsheets, my uh, my numbers. You'll find them on that website. He has them posted there. So visit there and you'll see the numbers. But uh, and you can compare them yourselves, pull them up, scroll through them as much as you want. Um, the surpass and the hobby wing. The hobby wing is uh, going to be better on the top end speed. Getting up there is going to take a little bit longer. So big open tracks. Hobby wing would be a little bit faster. And then uh, the Tekken. So. My final thoughts on the Orca. My final thoughts are this. So the Orca, it has a, an aluminum case that goes around the uh, stator. I like that because it helps absorb the heat. So if you have a fan on it, it's going to absorb that heat a lot faster than pulling the heat off of the, the stator itself. It's kind of like a heat sink. That's my thoughts on it. Um, the way I see how heat sinks work. That's my thoughts on it. Um, now the uh, going down the straightaways, you know, with a lighter load on it, it's a fast motor. It'll get you down there pretty fast, and it'll get you up to speed pretty fast. Uh, big tracks, I wouldn't say it's a great motor for big tracks. Um, little smaller tracks, I would say, a little tighter tracks, stuff like that would be great. Some with the uh, uh, well, big turns, big twisties, and stuff like that. Great motor, uh, on road, high traction, whatever. I think I think it'd be a good motor. I, I wouldn't, I would not. I'd put this up against any of the basically just about any of the motors out there. When it boils down to it, it's all about the driver, right? It might meet your driving style. So, anyhow, that's my thoughts on this motor. Uh, if this video was helpful for you, by all means, hit the like and subscribe. Um, again, if you want to see this spreadsheet, go to WMHRacing.com. I will put it down there in the link uh, in my uh, down below. And then, uh, but yeah, if you didn't like this video, please hit the like and subscribe anyway so you can make fun of all my other videos. All right, everybody, take care.